Long before Karen Finley smeared chocolate on her bottom, Annie Sprinkle showed us her cervix, or Orlan began her course of reconstructive cosmetic surgery, comely Edwardian ladies were pioneering a new hybrid art form in which the personal was political, the political was performative, and the performance was public. In other words, suffragettes, not Jackson Pollock, invented performance art. Suffragettes demonstrated that the medium is the message long before Marshall McLuhan. The message was that women's rights and women's influence should no longer be confined to the home, and the medium was thousands of women marching together through the streets of the capital city. On the 9th of February, 1907, 3,000 women marched through horrific weather from Hyde Park Corner to an assembly in the Exeter Hall. Humble though it may have been, this mud march and the mass media coverage it excited gave the movement more publicity in a week than it had captured in the previous 50 years, catapulting the fight for women's suffrage into the public consciousness. In response to a reported remark by the Prime Minister that he simply didn't believe the majority of women actually wanted the vote, the Women's Social and Political Union organized Women's Sunday on the 21st of June, 1908 in which women from all over the country were urged to turn out in public to show the Prime Minister, the MPs and the nation at large that the suffrage campaign was not simply comprised of a few dour spinsters, but of thousands of women from all walks of life. Mrs. Pankhurst declared it the largest political meeting in English history, and even the Times grudgingly estimated the attendance at half a million people, conceding, it's impossible to recall anything at all comparable in mere magnitude. On the 17th of June, 1911, 40,000 women marched again in their most spectacular and theatrically executed procession. A seven mile long pageant of women with music, floats, hand embroidered banners and a great parade of women of history led by Joan of Arc on horseback. The parade was called the Women's Coronation Procession because in scale and grandeur it fully rivaled the great royal tradition. Through the spectacle of the marches and the power of thousands of women claiming centre stage in the national press, the public was largely converted to their cause. The government, however, turned down the reform bill in 1912, giving rise to a new wave of performances. The processions had shown the public a peaceful, feminine front of women, and undoubtedly the greatest millinery display in history. Continued government opposition, however, fueled a new hybrid of politics and performance, a more visceral, uncompromising, iconoclastic and hard-hitting style of performance. This time the women specifically targeted the privileged white male, burning feminist slogans into golf courses and cricket pitches, smashing the windows of London men's clubs and even burning Lloyd George's half-completed country home. They coined the phrase, the personal is political, and created a distinction between theatre and performance a distinction they made literal through imprisonment and hunger striking. Suffragettes posted themselves as human letters, performed on flotillas on the Thames during ministers' tea breaks, and chained themselves to carriages. On one occasion, they synchronized their watches and in unison pulled hammers from their handbags and simultaneously smashed windows in exclusive shopping districts across London, a performance precursor to I shop, therefore I am. My purpose here isn't to catalogue them all, but rather to note the cross-fertilisation of politics, theatre, visual art and theory, which gave rise to so many of the ideologies which continue to drive performance art, such as the focus on the body as a site of oppression and resistance, the effectiveness of guerrilla tactics in alternative representations of the status quo, the power of the live presence, and the performance of personal truths as opposed to acting a part, and the firm belief that the personal is political. And finally, my purpose is to invite you to make a spectacle of yourself for something you believe in. <laughs>